Y'all got me in my zone with this Moss, I'm feeling right at home with this Let's talk ownership Liquid assets, that's bonus shit Been out the way before Corona hit I guess I'm on my shit Now, usually I ain't known the trip I'm just a street nigga gone legit Made a few wise moves while on this path full of turns and twists Guess it's safe to say I earned this shit Kid Mass, you already know, man. I'm rocking with Machiavelli Media. And my boy Gab. We the Tupac forever. They go city this bitch. And I got my nigga G thing. Man. That is it. Said the greatest artist you touch. And seen him and me. Seen Pop. Seen Snoop. Seen him and me. I guess I was Kendrick before Top had TDE. What happens when you and your idol is best friends and your dreams jump out of the screen? It's just it. Only Gab can do it like this. Yo, YouTube, what up? It's your homie Gab, I'm in the building. And this is Machiavelli Media. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, my homeboy, man, San Diego's finest, Mass. What's poppin', baby? What's up with you, Gab? Fairly, fairly so, fairly so. And who's that about it, man? Hey, look, outside of being a huge hip-hop fan, and being a huge Tupac fan, you actually traveled and walked some of the same road that Tupac went down, man. You know, I heard an incredible story about you and Shaq. What you hear? What you hear? What you hear? What you heard? I heard, I heard the day you met Shaq G, next thing you know, you was on stage with the underground. You got to give us that story, man. Come, come on, hit me with it real fast. Who told you that? I don't fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it was crazy, man. I... Pretty much, I was 16. My brother-in-law had built a relationship with uh, Shaq G and them as a fan. They used to put noses on and be jumping around and parading around every time Shaq and them came to town, showing them mad love. So one day, Shaq, one year, Shaq pulled them on stage. He had all the video, like VHS footage of the whole thing. So he was like, look, I told Shaq about you. You got a year. They come here next year, next summer. You got a year to get your stuff in order. So I was 15 when he told me. When it came out 16, we ended up playing some uh, some football. And then, shoot, I, I had shot. Can you listen to my demo? I played the shit for the nigga. And the rest was history. From there, the nigga was like, yo, come on stage with me tonight. And I was like, what? So, yeah, it was like a whirlwind situation. Man, it shit happened quick. Quick, fast, well, and then it happened. Wow, man. What was that like mashing with the underground, man? Your money B. Shout out to Money B. That's my old boy, young hump. Big hump. What was that like, though, man? fam? A lot, a lot of us, man. It's a, lot of, a lot of us in the family. But uh, it's incredible, man. I mean, these guys are legends. These same dudes that, that brought Tupac in the game. Tupac was the whole motivation behind me starting my rap career. So, I mean, come on. Imagine it. Like, it, it was amazing. Like, next level. Yo. <laughs> It, you got some fire, my dude. Like, you really got some ill stuff, man. You know, as an MC, you know, it take a lot to impress me, bro. And I was definitely impressed <laughs> when I heard your stuff, man. And um, I hear the rumors, oh, man. I, I, I hear a few people. Man. Hey, thank you, bro. But I hear a few people say so you actually remind them of that kid, Pac, man. What's that like being put in that conversation? There's some big shoes to fill, bro. Listen, man, it's humbling. Trust me. The greatest of all time is, like I said, the reason why I even do what I do. So to even be put in that category, you know, is a blessing. Also, you know, I never wanted people to think like I'm trying to like be Tupac, and then I never wanted that vibe. So it was like, no, never that, never that. It's hard. It's 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 a it's a catch twenty two. You know what I'm saying? So on one hand, it's a blessing to be to be mentioned in the same breath with that dude. You know what I mean? He's a legend. You did, but on the other on the other hand, like you know. I, I, I carved my own pants out here. 
Yeah, no doubt about it, man. And, and you know, you did your own thing, man. You know, the brief times I talked to you, man, you're such a humble person, man. And um, that speaks a lot, man. But the people that actually compare you to Tupac is some of the people that spent time around Tupac. I mean, that's the most impressive thing. Um, you know, I heard you doing big things. I know you're doing some big things. And you're doing big things with the doctor, Dr. Dre. Uh -oh. what, what that be like, Claire, <laughs> working with Dr. Dre, man? Listen, brother, I'm going to tell you like this, man. I've known Dre for a long time. we got a really good personal relationship. And that dude is one of the greatest thinkers that I ever met, for sure. He's a deep thinker. He's definitely the best there is, the best there was, and ever will be when it comes to that studio and anything to do with it. Regardless of what y'all heard, and if y'all hearing it right from me today, Dr. Dre is the best. No debate, none of that. He's the best man in that studio. He knows what the fuck he's doing. Period. Period. Yeah, I mean, that kind of go what I was saying at this point, fam. Like, you know, Dr. Dre is definitely a legend. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, even, yeah. even after all these years, you know, you got people that pop up every now and then trying to take credit for certain things, and it's like, no, 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 no. You got to look at the whole conglomerate. Like, this guy's a generator of sound. Like, he knows where the sound should go, how it should name, you know? Yeah, no doubt about it. So, look, when did you first meet Dr. Dre? How did that happen in the first place? Sure. So, after Shot G swooped me up, him and Money B and Cletus Mack had me in L.A. just, you know, interacting with everybody out there. So, I ran through the whole ring of Los Angeles. Meanwhile, I was looking for Dre the whole time. And then I come to find out he's five minutes away from me. And I mean, for four years, he was five minutes walking distance away from where I lived. Wow. Yeah. So it kind of all kind of just started unraveling. But uh, my first move was I got a job at his gym. He had a public gym that he had just opened up. I got cool with the owners, with the guys who was running it. Shout out to him. Uh, we still got a good relationship to this day. But uh, pretty much I reached out. They gave me a job. Um, I ended up getting cool with Dre. We built a relationship. And then, you know, it slowly, slowly turned into music. A musical relationship. And the rest is history. <laughs> you know what I mean? The rest is what they call history. Hey, what's not, one of the so not so easy like that, but, but yeah, I mean, now we're looking at it now that it's all said and done. Yep, the rest is history. The rest is history, man. So, look, it's a big misconception out there. For people that don't know, how much love did Dr. Jerry have for Tupac? You guys ever talk about Pac in the studio and things like that? All the time, man, Pop name come up, man, because, you know, I'm just from that whole lineage. I started this kind of pot, so, you know, Pop name come up a ton of time. Pop name come up in the rhymes sometimes, you know. Basically, he had hella love for Tupac, man. You know, Pop was one of the most talented dudes he ever worked with. Uh, you know, it's just the guys, the death row, the whole camp, that whole vibe, that's what really what threw Dr. Dre off, like, yo, the violence and, you know, the recklessness. He wasn't there for none of that. Right. So that, that was the mismatch of Tupac and Dr. Dre at that time in Dr. Dre's life. See, Pop was coming in. Dre had already got shot. Dre had already been been through a murder trial with Snoop. Dre had already, you got me? The seen a million niggas get pissed away for stomped out in the studio. Like, he was over that shit. Yeah, no doubt about it. Dre was definitely, you know, trying to move on with his life, you know, cool. Look, look at it. If you look at it, so was Snoop. Snoop just got off a murder trial. Like, come on, my nigga, like, because they had just got through dealing with all that wild shit and niggas dying and niggas getting shot and shot murder trials. And, you feel me? Yeah. They're like, fuck, no disrespect, Pac, we just got through doing all of that, my nigga. Right. So, Max, what was up with the H? Give me the story of the H. Rider Outlaw background. What was, what was popping with that? Oh, you heard about that, huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Get a little research, Gab. I like that. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So, look, man, H. Ryder, man, I feel like H. Ryder was a young teen around Tupac around the time he died, right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't, in, like, an official outlaw, but, like, his his mom and dad messed with Pac. Like, his dad was, like, a gangster in L.A., and I think his dad messed with a fiend as far as, like, that was real cool. You got right, a, right, a, right. Power player in L.A., and he was cool with the team. With that being said, he being 
uh, Ace Ryder, I mean, his son, he was able to be around Tupac and all the rest of the outlaws and whatnot. Okay? But he was always scared to rap around Tupac. Tupac asked him one time in the studio, and if you rap, then he got scared and never said nothing. Oh, got, man. Yeah. So, Pac ended up dying a couple months later. He never got to rap for him. So, of course, uh, he's like already family and shit, so... Outlaws ended up taking him, you know, in with him, and he, he did all the stuff the Outlaws was doing, like going out there with cash money. Everything Outlaws did when, when Pac first died, he was right there with him. So, you know, they, they went on John Sally and all the shit, but like, he was right there with him. So, in his heart of heart, you know, he's like, he is an outlaw, you know? Who got right. about it? Kind of. Kind of. He's family, for sure. But, so what ended up happening is this guy ends up fucking growing up, his dad ended up dying, leaving him some, some money. Now this nigga's big and rich and powerful out in Vegas. So this guy, uh, I met him through Yuckmouth when I was running the studio in L.A. You got me? Yuckmouth. Mm -hmm. So some years go by, I ended up running to the guy where we both was in county jail in um, Las Vegas. And this guy's like, yo, I'm rich, I got a mansion, da, 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 da. So I go to his crib, I ended up meeting Badass, R.I.P. I ended up meeting Badass. badass. Listen, I end up meeting Big Psych over there, R.I.P. Oh, uh, Pete, Big Psych. I end up meeting K. Castro over there. And pretty much, like, that was my other way outside of these underground to, like, get in cool with, like, all the outlaws and, and, and Pac family and that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? It was through H. Ryder. Oh, yeah, shout out to the homie Noble, man. Young Noble and the outlaws. Yeah. Oh, shout out to No, shout out to EDI, shout out to my nigga, uh, Kitty Black, Bill, Bill Banger. You already know, the whole family, man, for real. Shout out to y'all. His love. But, um, so the Ace Rider cat, the story is going somewhere, bro. So through Ace Rider, I was able to meet Athena Shakur. Athena Shakur ended up crying on my shoulder when I first met her. Did not know me from Adam. Epic. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Mike Epps was hosting uh, the Tupac uh, birthday party. This is in 2010, 2010 in uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, okay, at the Tupac Amaru Center. Mr. Phoenix Sikora gets on stage to thank everybody for coming. She breaks down crying. I'm there to perform with H. Rod. So when she gets on stage, there's a million people all around. Me and her is like way far apart from each other. There's a million people in between us. We magnetically just came together, bro, when she got off stage. She just went right to me, right in my arms, and cried in my arms, and said, thank you, baby, thank you for coming. She did not know who I was at that time. I got formally introduced to her later by uh, by uh, Kay Castro. He's like, yo, auntie, this is a close friend of the family. She's like, oh, I met him earlier. I was like, wow. But, like, that lady didn't even know who I was. She just cried in my arms. Like, what type of sign is that? Man, that was definitely a sign. That was, <laughs> you know what I mean? That was, that was, that was, that was spiritual right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, I see the Miss uh, I see the Shakur, man. Oh, uh, I see the Mr. Feeney. No doubt about it. Broke my heart in pieces when I heard that. No doubt, bro. I mean, the, the story is fascinating, man. I, so, what's what's next for Mass though? Like, you know, where the people can find you, bro? Where can they find your music? At? Come on, plug your stuff, man. They got the this. Look, man, I'm anywhere on on social media at Mass or die M A S S O R D I E. Um, I got some really, really Interesting things coming up with the doctor, with aftermath related uh, things on a bigger scale. Definitely, uh, definitely want to surprise y'all with this next move, but it's coming real soon. It's coming sooner than you think, and it got something to do with some cinema. And some music. <laughs> That's it. No but doubt. Something to do with some cinema and some music, for sure. No doubt, man. Hey, we got a few surprises for him as well, but we, hey, we ain't going to hit him with that yet, though. Oh, yeah, they wait for all that, guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the next level, level up. <laughs> hey, man, before we get on up out of here, bro, I want to say thank you for coming through, you know what I mean, and sharing your story with the Tupac community and my Machiavelli media family, man. Anything you want to say to the people before we get on up out of here? All I want to say is, man, follow your dreams. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody tell you you can't do what you want to do. I started this when I was 10 years old. Because Tupac had died, I was like, anybody gonna come that real? Anybody gonna be that hard? And now look at me today. Now I'm in position to, you know what I mean? Take take what my man's left off there. So 
If y'all rocking with me, I'm going to rock with y'all, period. Let's go. Say no more. I need you guys to share, like this video. Don't forget to sub to the channel. This is Machiavelli Media. Thanks for rocking with me and the homie Mass. It's been a pleasure as always. I'm signing off. I'm about to hit y'all with the uh, peace.